Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, and we're looking at a new area for our maths today. We're looking at actually rounding numbers. Now, we're doing this because a couple of people who I've been working with have had a bit of trouble with rounding numbers. So, I thought we'd look at rounding whole numbers at the moment. So, we're going to round whole numbers today, and tomorrow we'll go on to rounding decimals, which gets a little bit harder. So, what is rounding? Well, rounding is making a number simpler, so it's easier for us to manage. And the whole idea of rounding is that it keeps a number close to its original value, and so it's quite accurate. It's not as accurate, but it's far easier to use, and that's why we have rounding. It gives us an understanding of a number, and it's an approximate amount. All right, let's start having a look. So we're going to start with rounding to the nearest 10. Now, if we're rounding to the nearest 10, it will end in a zero. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way through it to even larger numbers. There's going to be at least one zero, I say, because um, if it was rounding to the nearest 10 and it was close to, say, 200, then it would end in two zeros. But most of the time, one zero. Rounding does require us to have an understanding of place value. And when we're rounding to the nearest 10, we need to be able to identify the tens either side of that number or the tens that that number falls between. So I've got a little bit of a mistake here. That should actually say 14. 14 is between 10 and 20. There it is on the number line. So there's 10, there's 20, and that's where 14 falls. Now, it's easy to see that 14 is closer to 10, and so it's rounded down to 10. 57 is between 50 and 60, and the blue arrow shows it's closer to 60. So when we round to the nearest 10, it's rounded to 60. 95 is between 90 and 100, and it's exactly halfway between. But a rule of rounding is when it's halfway, we always round up. We always round to the next number. Often when I explain why this happens, I talk about an aeroplane flying from one place through to the other. Now, if that aeroplane has difficulty halfway along, it's not going to turn around and go back. It will keep going on to its next destination. But the general accepted rule when rounding is if it's exactly halfway between two points, you round up. It works even for larger numbers. So in three digit numbers, 268 is between 260 and 270. It's still closer to 270, it's rounded up. And if we move into four digits, 1611, it's between 1610 and 1620, but it's rounded down. So the trick with rounding is to be able to identify what you're rounding to and therefore those numbers either side of the one you're after. Let's give you a go. So in this exercise, I want you to round to the nearer 10. So therefore, it will end in a zero. Make sure that if for all of your answers here, your number ends in a zero. If it's a five that it ends in, always round up to the higher number. So think of 18, it falls between 10 and 20, what is it closer to? And for each of these, identify what tens are either side of those numbers. They get a little bit harder as you go, give it your best shot. All right, pause the video now and complete this exercise. Let's see how you went. All right, so if I round 18, it goes up to 20. 49 is between 40 and 50, so it rounds to 50. 123 rounds down to 120. 207 rounds up to 210. 671 rounds down to 670. 867, well, seven's more than five, so we take it up, 870. 991 rounds down to 990. 1322, 1320. I'll let you have a look at the rest of those and mark them.
All right, I'm moving on. So if you haven't marked those, pause now, finish marking, and then let's move on. All right, we're now rounding to the nearest hundred. Now that might be easier um, to identify what it falls between. So like with 10 where we must end in one zero, when it's rounded to the nearest hundred, it will end in two zeros. Unless of course, the hundreds that it's closest to is the thousand, then it would be three zeros, wouldn't it? So the last two digits will be zeros. Therefore, when we compare these digits to 50, um, we'll see if it's rounded up or down. When it's rounded to 10, it was five. When it's rounded to 100, it's 50. And so on these number lines, I have placed the 50 in the middle there for that one. So 267 is our first example, and it's between 200 and 300. It's easy to see that it's bigger than 200, but it hasn't yet reached 300. So I've underlined the 67 because that's what I need to look at, and I compare that to 50. 67 is larger than 50. That's approximately where it would fall on this number line. You can clearly see it's closer to 300. In larger numbers, we still look at the last two digits and compare that to 50. 1,429 is between 1,400 and 1,500. Notice two zeros, two zeros. They're rounded to the nearest 100. 29 is less than 50. That's where it would fall on the number line. So it's rounded down to 1,400. 3,550. Again, I've underlined the last two digits. It's between 3,500 and 3,600. 50 is always rounded up. So we round it up to 3,600. Right, here's the exercise for you. Again, look at the last two digits. Always compare it to 50. See whether it's going to be rounded up or rounded down. The first one... Uh, the first digit, the hundreds digit, in each of these, whether it's um, in the thousands or just in the hundreds, that will be your lower end. So notice here, 267, 200, and the next one, 300. So 100 for A and 200. In B, 400 and 500. Jump down to F, 800 and 900. If I jump down to I, 2,800, 2,900. All right, pause the video and have a go at these ones and then come back to see how you went. All right, let's check on your work and how well you did. There are the answers. 131 does round to 100. Notice in all of them, the answers end in two zeros, except in this one here where it's three zeros. And that's because 991 is actually closer to a thousand. It's a hundred as well as a thousand. Pause the video while you mark. All right, I hope you did well with those ones. You can always go back and have another go and then um, rewind the video and check for yourself again. Well, we've rounded to the nearest 10, we've rounded to the nearest 100, that's right, time to round to the nearest 1,000. When we round to the nearest 1,000, it will end in three zeros at least. And yes, everything goes up by a place value. So we're going to compare the last three digits to 500 to see if it's more than the next 1,000 or less than the next 1,000 to determine whether we round up or round down. In this particular case, I've given you the thousands that it falls between and you have to simply circle which of those you're going to go to. So 3,131, is it closer to 3,000 or is it closer to 4,000? So you simply circle your choice. This one should be a little bit faster for you, a little bit easier. All right, pause the video while you complete this exercise. Let's check your work. So 3,131 will round to 3,000 because 131, when compared to 500, is less 
therefore we round down. 489 is less than 500, so you should have also rounded down. Whereas 853 is clearly more than 500, so we're going to round up. So I'll give you the answers and see how you go. So mark them as we go. All right, how did you go with those? You can practice some of these for yourself, but that was a um, bit of practice with rounding to the nearest 10, to the nearest 100, and to the nearest 1,000. I hope this bit of practice helps you out to remember. Bring this knowledge again with you to tomorrow's lesson where we'll be rounding decimals. Okay, that's it for today, guys. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye now.